I am Pastor Agnes Williams of Agnes Williams Ministries. Welcome to Kingdom Connections. The Agnes Williams Ministries Kingdom Connections, our vision is to establish the Kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Our mission is to transform humanity by the renewing of their minds through the Word of God, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. You can join us every Saturday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network to discuss with you on principles and shrine in the Word of God. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Pastor Agnes Williams of Agnes Williams Ministries, here once again to, to discuss with you on principles enshrined in the Word of God. Today, we'll be looking at the last days, the last days. And the scripture is taken from 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Speaking about the last days. Why, why are we talking about the last days? Why did Jesus Christ mention about the last days? He wanted his disciples and his followers to be able to, to discern the sign of the times and the nearness of his coming that we'll all continue living according to principles enshrined in his word. We'll continue to walk in love and forgiveness. We'll continue to be doing his work to win souls for him and to please him according as he has taught us in the Holy Scriptures. So in 2 Peter chapter 3, It speaks here about what times are we really in? What times are we really in? We are in the last days. Look at the situation upon the earth. Look at the situation upon the earth. Sometimes we wonder why is this happening? But remember the Lord told us that he destroyed the first earth by water. And he said he will never do it again by water. He'll destroy the second earth by fire and then have a new world with those who have believed in him and who has accepted his son as their savior and are willing to live according to his precepts that he has laid down. So in chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3 of 2 Peter chapter 3, we see here where he says, um, I now write unto you that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the prophets and of the commandment of us the Lord, the apostles of the Lord. Knowing this that in the last days there shall be scoffers walking after their own lusts and they'll be saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were. That's not true. All things have not continued as they were. If we look at where we are now in the world, in the entire world, in this pandemic season, you can see that something is going to happen. Man's sin has allowed this thing to happen. The Antichrist has started his kingdom more fully. And we, who know Jesus Christ as our Savior, must be aware of the situation that is that where we are in the timeline of God's redemption. It says in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 4, he said, people will, scoffers will say, where is the promise of his coming? 
Since the fathers fell asleep, all things behave the same. But they are really ignorant, as he says. He said, the Lord says, for this they are willingly, I'm ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and the water, whereby the world that then was, being over flood with water, perish. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And he said in verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But God is long suffering to us, word. He not willing, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So we see here that God has designed a destruction of evil to make a new world, a new earth. And some people say, since the beginning of time, we've been hearing that nothing has changed. But if they are smart enough to study the word of God and to read history, they'll see many things have changed. And if they're compared with the word of God, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we'll see we are really in predicament in these last days. I am past 70 years. I don't know what happened with the first and the second and what world wars they had. But I have never experienced a worldwide predicament, pandemic, as we have at this time. Whether it was man-made, God allowed man to make it, God knows. But we have to look at the signs of the times and make sure that we are ready for the end of the times of the earth, ready when the Lord tells his son Jesus Christ to come back and take up his people, when he is ready to judge the world, judge us for our lack of accepting his son Jesus Christ as our savior, for our lack of believing that he is God by himself, that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die and to rise from the dead, that we can have eternal life and be with him instead of being away from him and being living with the enemy of our souls. How do you see the world today? Are you happy with the pandemic where we have total shutdowns, where people are getting so many mid thousands are getting sick and some are dying all over the world and even our own country here? We have to look up and search the word of God because in them we have eternal life. And in the word of God will tell us the signs of the times. And the signs of the times are really evident. Men shall be lovers of themselves and lovers of God. There will be so much evil lifestyles Men loving men, women loving women, men marrying men, men marrying men. Some of these things are sort of been made okay in many countries. But in God's law, man was not made for man. Woman was made for man. God created man first. And then he saw he needed a companion, he made woman. The very nature of how man and woman are made up can tell you that our God is the most awesome God. He designed it that way. But Satan in his evil ways to control man and to turn man away from God has turned us 
from the truth. In many countries, they have legalized things that God said in his word are not true. Woman with woman, man with man, in sexual intercourse is not right. But many countries have accepted that sort of law. We are really in the last days. The stench of our sin of the sin of, the, of men, mankind is filling up God's nostrils. And just as how God sent the flood in Noah's time to destroy the then world, he promised he'll destroy the world this time and the evil people, not by water but by fire. And you have to search the scriptures to understand by the guidance of the Holy Spirit where we are at this time. What are we doing? To whom will we pray? Are we going to pray to the idols and the statues made with iron and stone and brass and silver hewed out by man's hands? Or are we going to lift up our eyes to the hills from whence come at our help and search and talk to Almighty God through His Son, Jesus Christ, whom He sent? There are many people who refuse salvation through Jesus Christ and they've died. And they are wishing that they can come back to this earth to have another chance to repent of their sins and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and live. But, the Bible says it, it is appointed unto men once to die and after death it's the judgment. So we see here In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men come slackness. But he is long-suffering to us all. Because God loves us, he's long-suffering. Because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all, if God can have all mankind to come to repentance, he'd be the happiest God out. So, Check your own life. Check your lifestyle. Check your beliefs. What do you believe? In whom do you believe? A God that is made with stone, silver, or gold, or wood from some tree? No. Those have no life. A man has to lift those gods and take them to places, move them around. But with our God, he can move us around. We just serve him in spirit and in truth, and trust him according to his word. So, when the day of the Lord comes, how will we know? He said, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. You know, if the Lord had promised that he would first destroy the world by water, and he did that, history has shown that the floods had covered the then earth. How much more this second coming or the second destruction, God will do it. Only those who believe that there's Almighty God the Father who sent his son Jesus Christ to live on the earth, to feel like us, to bear our burdens, to die like a man. When they buried him, he rose him up from the dead again. History has proven that Jesus Christ was alive, he was dead, and he rose from the dead, and they saw him ascending to heaven. Man can say what he wants. Man cannot undo what God is doing. We mere mortals just have to obey the Lord, follow his scriptures, live a life to please him on the principles enshrined in his word, walk in love and forgiveness. First of all, we ought to repent of our sin because we are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Because when Adam sinned, sin passed unto the entire human race. But God, but God so loved the world 
that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, in the form of a man, born of a religion, Virgin Mary. And he lived and died and was crucified for us, and God raised him from the dead. And people saw him go up into heaven, shaking up in the cloud. There are records of that. Our God is the most awesome God. Almighty God, our Father Jehovah God, is the most awesome. He is the only true and living God. And there are many people today who are crying and screaming in the place of damnation and wishing that they can come back up on earth to change their decision or their choice. But again, it is a point on a man who wants to die and after death is the judgment. So in this pandemic season especially, we ought to check our lives, ensure that we search the scriptures and see what God says and build our daily life on the principles that God has enshrined. God's words have never failed over the years. Whatever he said was going to happen has come to pass. And we will have no excuse if we miss God because he has sent his prophets, his priests, the ordinary laymen. He sent us his word. He sent the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us through our consciences. He speaks to us through many different mediums. It is for us, each one of us, to make a decision. Are we going to believe the word of God or are we going to believe the words of man? At this present time, man has no control. We have lost almost entire control over humanity. But I praise God for those who are trying to see what could be done. Those who have a heart, they are still trying to see what could be done to save mankind. But the true saving of mankind is when someone acknowledges that he or she was born in sin, shaped iniquity according to the Bible, and we do sinful things of course, but God sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And if we'll accept what God did for us, humble ourselves, repent of our sins because we were born in sin, and ask God to forgive us and cleanse us in the precious blood of his son Jesus Christ, we will be born again, we'll be made anew, we'll become children of God, and then we'll have to, every day, try to walk in the principles and live in the principles that he has enshrined in the word of God. And don't be afraid. If you make a mistake, the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed will never lose its power. There's a song that says the blood will never lose its power until all the ransomed church of God are saved to sin no more. God loves us. He loves mankind. That's why he has gone to the nth degree to send his son Jesus Christ to live, to die, and to rise again. And to pay the price of our sin that if we believe in Jesus Christ and accept him as our Savior, repent of our sins, we will once more become sons and daughters of God. The only way to God is through his son Jesus Christ. Not through a statue hammered down by, by men, a statue of gold or silver or brass or wood. No man can make God with any material he has. God is God all by himself. If God wasn't God by himself, could you stop yourself from dying? Could you live forever without dying? No, no, no. It is a point on unto men wants to die, and after death, the judgment. Hear us today. It's up to you to make your decision. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to be born of a virgin 
to live upon this earth, to feel what we feel, to bear our sins, to die on the cross, then he raised him up again and said, you are going to be at my, my right hand, constantly making intercession for mankind. What a love. No man can love like God loves. No man can tell me that he can love anybody as great as how God loves mankind. The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Today I present to you one more time Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I present to you salvation through Jesus' blood. Salvation through his death upon the cross of Calvary. What an awesome, ignominious death, awful death he had to die. They beat him and do him so many things. We couldn't pay the price for our sins, but God sent his son Jesus Christ to pay the price for our sins. He suffered because he had a human body, so he felt all the agony and the pains that a human being would suffer. Jesus Christ bore it all for us because he was obedient to his father. He loved us so much. He said, yes, father, I will go and live and die that mankind can be redeemed. Oh, what an awesome price God has paid for a man's salvation. If we continue to search for God, to read the principles enshrined in the word of God, to believe and accept that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but God sent his son Jesus Christ to die. And he rose him again from the dead. And if we accept God's provision for us and we strive daily <coughs> to please God and the principles in his word at the end of our lives, so if God comes before, we will be with him. But all those who refuse the Lord Jesus Christ, all those who receive this, who refuse the sacrifice that Christ paid for us, that God sent his only son. If you do not accept the price that God sent, the gift he sent for us, there is no other help for us. Our portion after death, or if the Lord comes before, before you die, your portion in eternity will be away from God, and away from God will be with the devil and his angels in a place that will not be easy. It will be a place of torment and fire and heat forever. So today again I present to you salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just simply try to understand. It's not anything difficult to do. He said, if you believe in your heart and you repent of your sins and you accept Christ as your Savior, because you were born in sin and, and we all do sin. You can't tell me that since you were born, you never did something wrong. Sometimes you hate somebody, you want to beat them up. You want to steal somebody's thing, which is not normal for a normal human being whom God had made. So today I present to you Jesus Christ. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Repent of your sin. Accept Jesus Christ as your savior and turn your life over to God and you will feel the difference. You will see the difference when you study, and when you study the word of God and fellowship with folks who believe in Jesus Christ, you will see what a difference. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody will be perfect and you aren't perfect but we are all working towards perfection on principles enshrined in the word of God. And the first step is to acknowledge that we are born in sin, repent of our sin, and accept Christ as our Savior. So, have a great day. I trust that you will search the word of God, for in them you have eternal life. If you don't believe what I'm saying, 
get the Holy Bible and read it for yourself. And the Holy Spirit will teach you and open your eyes and you will find Christ as your Savior. So have a great day. God bless you. I am Pastor Agnes Williams of Agnes Williams Ministries. Welcome to Kingdom Connections. The Agnes Williams Ministries Kingdom Connections, our vision is to establish the Kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven, according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Our mission is to transform humanity by the renewing of their minds through the Word of God, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. You can join us every Saturday from 4 to 4.30 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network to discuss with you on principles enshrining the Word of God. We meet at the, our sanctuary in Signal Hill, Tank Road, every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and on Friday at 6.30 p.m. for a prayer meeting where we continue to worship God and to fellowship with one another.